Hi, welcome to this edition of My Semicon Daily TV. I'm Deborah Vogler, and my guest today is Dr. Terry Brewer, founder and president of Brewer Science. Welcome, Dr. Brewer. Thank you. Uh, glad to be here. Well, as you know, our topic today is new materials. So let's start first with lithography. Progress and resist for UV lithography has reached the competitive stage in the industry, which usually means, as, as you know, that companies aren't too willing to share information publicly. But can you share anything with our viewers about what is left to accomplish, especially with the industry looking uh, uh, to more closer, uh, to move closer to pilot line activity? Yeah, uh, I think you're right. We are, we are getting closer to that. I think the model that the resist and the multi-layer uh, structures have provided have, uh, have, have, have come to a point where they are now executable into uh, early phases of manufacturing. So I think we are at that stage. I think the resist companies and, and, and the multi-layer technology has, has come a long way, and I think they have a model that's probably usable for a little while. So progress. Um, there's still many, many uh, issues to solve, of course. There's technical issues still in front of us, and um, there are, uh, of course, economic challenges also in front of us. A recent publication from Brewer Science presented at SPIE covered the topic of a multifunctional hard mask neutral layer for directed self-assembly. What are you seeing with respect to end users implementing DSA, especially as a complement to EUVL? Yeah. Uh, end users are very excited about DSA. Uh, the, the, the technology and the process is moving along very quickly, uh, and it looks like it will be available as a complement for EUV, but also uh, as a pathway on its own uh, to achieve smaller and smaller lithography. I think what we're seeing in general, even past DSA, is the fact that the tool chest for materials is broadening very rapidly uh, and can carry lithography down um, much, much further than it is now with a particular tool set or with a variety of tool sets. Um, I, I think we're going to be able to accomplish uh, the uh, next several nodes uh, utilizing that technology. It's very exciting. Um, I advise you all to, to read the paper. Uh, it's a very, very good paper, and it's, it's, it's probably reached the limits of my scientific understanding. I think uh, past this point, uh, I'm going to have to uh, uh, have it explained to me in simple language. <laughs> I highly doubt that, Dr. Brewer, but, <laughs> but uh, let, let's move on to the next topic. At least it's, it is exciting to know that DSA is making progress, and there, it, there, it does seem to be a very hot topic, if you will, right now. And it is making a lot of progress. So our next topic is uh, 3D integration. What are the challenges for material suppliers with respect to thin wafer handling, and how are you tackling those challenges? And then, as kind of a follow-up, you, you know, I like to la ask these long questions. <laughs> the challenge of handling thin wafers is key to enabling 3D integration, as you know, in a high-volume manufacturing environment. What is Brewer Science's role in making HVM a reality, and how do you think the milestones are going to play out in the industry? Yeah, to sort of answer the last part of the question first, our role is really to be a leader in the materials and the process development to make this uh, technology work and happen. Uh, the challenges are that as a material supplier, the process is continually evolving. It hasn't, it hasn't achieved its final end resting point yet. The customer is evolving it as they understand the needs better and the opportunities for the technology. The equipment companies are evolving as they understand and better uh, relate to the customer's needs. And then the material suppliers, we're kind of at the, the long end of the branch. Uh, and so as the customer wiggles the branch a little bit, setting at the far end, we see a lot of wiggle and change uh, and, and a lot of movement from, from those requirements. So for us, we're kind of caught between uh, uh, uncertainty and chaos with a constantly moving target. And actually, it's exactly where Brewer Science likes to be uh, because we're very good at achieving at that, at that uh, stage of, of, of technology. So I think for us, we are, we are the leaders in the material technology. We introduced zone bond processes, which, which flipped everybody from the, basically the glue and pry it apart uh, scenario to, to room temperature uh, uh, separation, 
to low stress separation, to uh, uh, shorter processing, uh, and uh, higher throughput. But that's only the beginning spot. Uh, from there, we're moving into uh, the more of the process technology needs. So as a customer is able to start enabling processes, there's finding more and more issues occurring at the process stage, particularly with thin wafer handling, where it's, it's gone from materials technology to glue stuff together, to stick stuff together, to really the, the sophistication of, of process to handle thin wafers. And that's kind of where we are right now. And at every stage, we have to give them an enabling or useful technology that will allow them to apply their, their development or their products at that stage of improvement. And so from there, we'll have to, we'll have to take it on to a, a more in-depth processing, uh, more challenges with handling the thin wafer, and finally reach the, the biggest challenge perhaps at all, which is the, the ability to do it at the sort of cost uh, uh, throughput um, needs of, of the customer. All right, now turning to something completely different uh, from Monty Python's Flying Circus fans, they know where that came from. <laughs> you recently installed a scale-up reactor at your carbon electronics center to support expansion of electronics-grade carbon nanotube materials for CNT-based memory devices. How are these efforts progressing? They're really progressing well. I mean, we've been in carbon nanotube manufacturing, uh, uh, particularly the high electronic grade material for some time. Most of that time has been spent delivering uh, test samples uh, and test quantities for, for a variety of customers in the memory area and out of the memory area and in, the, in, in uh, uh, sensors and other, other areas. What's happened within the last year or so is some of those customers are now moving their activity out of the testing regime into the, into the uh, pilot stage uh, uh, production. And because of that, there's, a, there's a, a pretty big need to increase the, the volume production of the carbon nanotubes. It's coming really well. We, we have the reactor. It's being installed. And by about third quarter of this year, uh, it will be ready to deliver about 10 times more volume uh, than, uh, than we were generating before that. So it, it's looking good. It's coming along really well. All right. Well, that will be very interesting to watch. Thank, Thank you so much for being my guest, Dr. Brewer. Thank you, Deborah. Really appreciate it every time. All right. Well, this wraps another edition of My Semicon Daily TV. Please join us again. Mm -hmm.